What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Times. What's up? What's up? And LaVon Maynard. What up? Welcome to the show. What is going on? So uh, please continue to uh, listen throughout the week. So um, Monday and Tuesday, we have our topics. Both of them are very relevant to this past weekend's uh, or week's events. Uh, Wednesday, we have a, a very good interview slash discussion with Mr. Johnny uh, Jones Jr. He is a podcaster, YouTuber, and the co-founder and uh, president of a nonprofit called Tech for All uh, Foundation. Definitely tune in for that one. Uh, Thursday should be Ask SSP where I, I filled your questions, people trying to break into cybersecurity uh, or even information technology, but um, it's SSP, so we, we hover over cybersecurity, right? Um, and then on Friday, we talk about everything else. So we, we try to uh, avoid the cyber talk and talk about the media and all that good stuff that we consumed. Uh, but there's always some cyber in there uh, uh, of some sort. But <laughs> with that being said, I give this uh, uh, over to Shannon. All right. So this one is from ZDNet.com. Um, it's written by Jonathan Greig. I hope I'm saying your name right, Jonathan, G-R-E-I-G. I'm guessing, but Greig. <laughs> but uh, um, title of the article, Colorado Energy Company Loses 25 Years of Data After Cyber Attack While Still Rebuilding Network. And they actually have a sub, they have a subtitle here. It says DMEA did not use the term ransomware, but said much of their data had been corrupted while phone and email services were down for weeks. And I think the importance of that is that um, what ended up happening, right? So this uh, Delta Montrose Electric Association, DMEA, um, so they actually got hit with an attack a month ago. This was November 7th. This actually hit them, right? Um, and they're still struggling to recover a month later, right? Um, so what ended up happening was this cyber attack they had, it took down 90% of their internal systems, caused 25 years of historical data to be lost. Now, they reassured us, okay, they reassured their customers that none of the sensitive data was lost, right? social security numbers, names, uh, credit card numbers for payments and things like that. But um, they did lose access to be able to uh, to uh, do payments online uh, and things of that nature, right? So they actually just recently, um, they have a timeline here um, of how everything happened. So November 7th was when they got the cyber attack, right? And again, they're not trying to call it ransomware, right? Because nobody has demanded anything of them, right? Um, uh, but November 7th, they got hit. Um, they actually had an investigation that was completed on November 15th, right? Um, which they, they assured their customers they're highly confident is what they said. No sensitive member or employee information has been compromised, right? Um, they had to t set up a temporary phone system. This is just wreaking havoc on their customers, right? Now, where this, where this falls into... I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say more serious territory for me, right? So like this is in Colorado and we're coming up on the winter months, right? Like I, I live in Colorado. So we're coming up on the on the winter months. And um, what you run into is that um, you have some of these companies that uh, they're all about that dollar, right? I'm not saying that's the case with these guys, but they've assured their, their, uh, their customers that they're not going to take any action on them because of this until January 31st. So they're going to they're going to have issues trying to get people to make their payments and do everything that they need to do, right? Because of this, because they lost 25 years worth of stuff and uh, they were having problems getting their payment system up. But they're saying they're not, uh, they're going to do, uh, they're not going to have anything, they're not going to suspend any services or anything like that till January 31st. Um, but this is one of those things where if you are, if you are a utility company right now, like you should definitely be on the lookout, right? From everything that we've seen, there's no way you can't think that you're not a target these days, right? Um, look at what everybody is going after. Not, let me not say everybody's going after, but look at what's, what's been hit, right? You got your water treatment facilities, you got a gas pipeline, you got uh, you got electric company, right? Companies now. Um, so these companies like this, I don't know what happened here. I'm not going to sit here and assume, you know, they weren't doing what they needed to do. I mean, these guys are getting smart. These guys and gals are getting smarter when it comes to uh, doing these attacks out there. But um, you've definitely got to be on the lookout. You've got definitely got to be on the lookout for this stuff because you are definitely a target in this day and age. You know what I'm saying? But Levon, what you got on this, man? Yeah, I think this is uh, this is an incredible, uh, incredible situation that happened here. I mean, this is, I don't know, this is a. Uh, uh, 
I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like something that's for for a company used to lose twenty five years of data. I mean, you know, uh, Ryan talked about it earlier, but you would think that somebody would have archived this data, put it somewhere that it was like safe. That's like you know, not connected to anything. Basically, just like uh, you know, it's not being used. It's not being accessed. It's just like in case of emergency, in case somebody needs to access it, access the data. Um, so like the, to to have that data be accessible and to be lost uh, in a seemingly easy manner. We don't know all the details as far as how they lost it, but uh, for that to happen, it's like, I feel like obviously somebody may may have made a mistake somewhere to allow that data to be accessible and not to have it archived. Or maybe somebody just didn't uh, uh, put together like a disaster recovery plan that was fleshed out to be able to, you know, think of these situations where, hey, what if our server that has 25 years of data gets uh, compromised? Do we have a, a secondary backup location somewhere else? Um, and for them not to have that, I think it's 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 kind of con, kind of con, it's obviously concerning. And hopefully that you know this is a, a you know a kind of a wake up call for the company to make sure that they are um, taking the steps necessary to make sure that their data is secured and and archived and backed up and and um, you know redundant. You know all this kind of stuff just to make sure that it's uh, it's highly available for for consum cons consumption. But it's uh, it's very interesting, and um, you know uh, the, the the part that you mentioned that kind of caught my eye when we said that there's uh, they suspended all penalty fees and this this, this connections for non payment through January twenty uh, thirty first twenty twenty two. I was like, I'm sure there's some people out there like, yeah, we get like an extra free month. Of <laughs> I was like, you know, I, I I didn't have any money this month, you know, this month anyway, so I'm gonna use this uh, as an opportunity to get some free service for a little bit. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, maybe somebody can get like a little bit of a benefit out of it. I'm sure they, they try to come back from the money later anyway. They're like, oh, you still owe us uh, that, that month and now additional month for the, for the time that we uh, couldn't collect payment from you. But uh, nonetheless, it's, uh, I guess there may be some uh, silver, uh, like a, what do you call it? Like a silver lighter, like a, there might be some positivity out, out of the, <laughs> the end of this uh, situation. But um, yeah, but nonetheless, it's like, it's, it's very concerning. I mean, hopefully they, they kind of take this into consideration. Maybe they want to, you know, uh, uh, you know, re up, uh, or maybe they want to like kind of take a look internally and look at their workforce and make sure that everybody's aligned to the proper proper uh, you know fields and make sure they have everything covered as they should, because um, I'm I'm sure that they do not want this to happen again. Um, it seems like it caused some big major issues, and I'm sure it's going to cost them a lot of money. And uh, now they have 25 years of data that's missing. And how do you kind of recover from that? How can you like, you know, maybe try to recreate some of this lost data that you've that you no longer have access to that's 25 years old. Um, it's just incredible. I can't even imagine. But um, but uh, Ryan, what do you think about this one? So I think you hit, it, hit the nail right on the head. Um, about business continuity, disaster recovery, vulnerability assessment. Like that's what cybersecurity is for, is to protect the company. Like uh, it's not just buzzwords. Like these things are baked in and they uh, obviously did, were not covered uh, appropriately. So. Um, 25 years. I don't even know <clears throat> how you can uh, equate that because, like Shannon said, it was a cybersecurity esque attack, um, uh, or sorry, ransomware esque attack, but they didn't ask for ransom, uh, to our knowledge. At least it hasn't been disclosed. So they came in, disrupted the internal network, and uh, corrupted files uh, up to backups. Apparently, like if they, if they, if they didn't have backups, I would not be surprised in this case. Uh, but if they did have backups and they still were able to access them and corrupt them, it's like, wow. Um, they, they hit you with the full gamut. Um, but and, it could be, it could be negligence on the company's part too. Right. So like, yeah, <clears throat> just, I'm sorry. <clears throat> just because they do the backups, you're supposed to check them as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So just take them and putting them in a facility somewhere or doing whatever. Cause from 25 years ago, more than likely they're doing tapes. Right. It wasn't some mm -hmm. type of, you know, some type of other electronic backup or whatever, but they were probably doing tapes that they just never checked on, right? Or, or something of, of that nature. But you don't just tabletop these things and say, okay, yes, let me let me check the box. We do have backups. They're over in wherever, wherever. Right, you know? right. And, and I'm guessing at that, but more than likely, I, I want to say that's more than likely what happened is that I want to. I don't want to sit here and say they weren't doing the backups or they weren't doing any type of disaster recovery. They just didn't verify that everything that they had worked, right? Like tapes like that, those are only good for so long, right? Before True. they're degraded yeah. beyond, be, be, before they're degraded uh, beyond usability. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and it's a, it's a pipeline, right? So uh, 
you're like, well, let's just recreate the, the, the data or let's just start fresh or what have you. But you have to think like now you're taxing some of the employees at that company are being overly taxed over the past month. They've been generating products uh, at non like breakneck nonstop pace. And then you have other people who rely on those products who are not doing anything. <clears throat> so you're losing productivity, like you're spending money on on things that you're not using. So and these other people are getting burnt out. So it's it's a a, a domino effect. Uh, across the board. And that's why cybersecurity is so important to business. Like you have to invest the money and time or your business will suffer nowadays because people aren't, aren't kicking in doors and still in servers anymore, or they may be doing that too. <laughs> right, right. In these high profile cases, that's not what's happening. Like they're sneaking in, they're wreaking havoc. Uh, who's to say they didn't corrupt the backups and then attack the uh, internal network? You know what I mean? Like work it, work it backwards. Mm -hmm. Like you, you're like, oh, let's go to our backups. And like your backups are corrupted. You're just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, no. <laughs> it's like, ah. So it's, it's very unfortunate. I don't mean to make light of it. I'm just saying like, this, this is the, the purpose of uh, cybersecurity because you have people out there who uh, sometimes they just want to see the, uh, the world burn. They didn't ask for money and they did this. They just did it to, to, to do it, to see if they could do it, make a name for themselves. Um, and that's uh, tragic, but it's, it's a thing that could happen to you. And like Shannon said, if you're high profile, if you're energy company of some sort, then you are on the hit list. Um, so you need to double up or uh, if you not even double up, like just invest in the resources uh, if you don't have them. So if you have gaps in your team, you need to fill those gaps with uh, knowledgeable, experienced people that keep you safe. Mm. But yeah, so all I got for that one. Um, so uh, again, tune in throughout the week. So uh, Monday, we discussed the um, <clears throat> log for shell uh, vulnerability that's out there that currently has a patch. Uh, very, very uh, recent um, topic that came up. Um, Wednesday, we have our discussion where we talk to uh, Johnny Jones Jr. Uh, Johnny is a uh, podcaster, YouTuber, uh, as well as he is the co-founder and president of the Tech for All Foundation. A nonprofit to help veterans uh, and people of color, or both, uh, get into <clears throat> excuse me, get into um, IT and and uh, cybersecurity. So definitely a great initiative. We talked to him on Wednesday. Tune in for that on Thursday. Should be Ask Us SP, and then on Friday we talk about everything else. So continue to tune in. Uh, hit up the website www.theothersideofthefirewall.com to get there on socials. Uh, give me up personally. I am at Ry Ry Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy on LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, and IG. And you, LeVon? Yes, sir. You can hit me up on the Twitters at LeVon Maynard. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure. Take care.